The next step in this is really to talk about the matrix rules. So once we build a matrix, it does nothing until we establish a set of rules around the matrix. So let's take a look at how that happens. Okay, back to the software. Once we build our matrix, they're worthless until we apply rules around them. So if I go take a look at my rules, here you're going to see for my sublet and towing matrix, I've said only apply that to sublet. So you have materials and sublet, I've said apply that matrix to sublet only. For my batteries, <clears throat> now I'm getting a little more detailed. I only want the batteries at 30% to apply to batteries. So a battery is going to be a material. I've singled out my service category where I sell my batteries, and then I have the ability to identify on top of that a service package title or a service package code. So this helps me refine my matrix to hit exactly the way I want. Tires, again, I've got some specific rules because I need to sell all my tires to make underneath a particular category to make this rule apply. Okay, and then my general is going to catch everything else. So essentially, these are my specific rules and specific rules must always be on top of general rules. Notice the organization. Okay, so my general is going to catch everything other than the ones I've entered. And this is important because if I had my general above tires, the software looks at whatever slot it's going to fall in first and it's going to, it's going to fall into that slot. So if I have tires below general, then my tires are going to be sold using the general matrix. So it's very important that we have the specifics above the general. We made a matrix a minute ago for filters. So I'm going to come in under my matrix rules and I'm going to add a rule for the matrix for the filters. Now my filters obviously are going to be materials. I could identify a specific category, but if I'm applying this to air filters, oil filters, cabin filters, transmission filters, fuel filters, then you know I could go in and build as many specific rules to where those jobs are and where their titles are. Or I can simply leave it like it is and I can come down here to a material description and say apply this wherever you see filter. Now it's important not to put filters down here because when you put it on a customer's invoice, you don't say air filters, you say air filter. And as a matter of fact, guys, I tested this the other day. If I just have F-I-L-T, it's going to pick it up. So it's a partial search, meaning whatever matching criteria you have here is going to be applied. All right, so if I do this, then I click on OK, so now my filter matrix is built in. Notice it's below general, so general is going to catch it. I need to bring my specific item above my general item. I'm going to click on save, and let's take a look at how that works. Let's just review right quick, everybody, that on my filters, okay, up to $25, 50%. Over $25, 45%. Let's see if it works. Okay, I'm going to just do a save on this work order so it picks up that new matrix. Here's an air filter. Okay, I'm going to go to properties. Okay, let's put in a filter under $25, let's say $15. We all know then it should price it at a 50% margin, and it does. If we buy a filter over $25, let's just say 30 Okay, then we know our matrix should change to 45, and if I accept that, so you see it's automatically pricing my filters because I've set this up to specifically work for air filters. So whatever the description, it's going to use that matrix. Okay, another way this is going to apply is if I go out to my catalog, doesn't matter who the supplier is, I do a check on my air filters, okay, I'm going to identify whichever filter I want, 
I'm going to bring it back to the work order and my matrix will already apply because my cost is under $25. You can see here that it's applying that matrix. Remember, I can always override it. If I wanted a 55% margin, I can do that. That exceeds my 50 that I had set up, but if I take it down to 45, that's below my 50 that I set up. So my flags will always indicate. So again, remember, I can mess around. I can even go up here and say, how about just a flat $35? I can do that if I want, but that achieves a 48% margin. And remember, I can always take it back simply by telling the software to take it back. So that's how we can use the matrix to single out a particular type of item. Let's take this one more level on the filters. What if I only wanted this to apply to a specific manufacturer type of filters? So what I can do with this now is I can go in here and say, I want this to apply to any Wix filter. Oops, sorry. I want this to apply to any Wix filter. So now I've created a rule that says only apply my filter matrix where you see a description filter and a manufacturer Wix. Let's take a look at how that works. Now I've changed my rule. I want to save my changes. I'm going to go back to my work order. I'm going to save it so it picks up the change I just made. I'm going to go out to the properties. I'll just pop out here to my catalog okay, under O'Reilly and I'm going to pick a filter here. Now, I'm not going to pick a Wix purposely to show you guys that it shouldn't work. So if I pick this filter or, or a Fram filter, doesn't matter as long as it's not a Wix, okay, I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Now, here it's applying a 55% margin. Let me explain why. So I'm going to have to cancel a lot of this. Let me do this. I'll just try and take a picture of it right quick. And I'm assuming you guys can see this. Okay. So let's understand why didn't it apply the 50% that I set up. I'm going to do a cancel. I've got a picture of that in the background. The reason why is because on my filter rule, I said only apply that to a Wix filter. That was not a Wix filter, so it bypassed this matrix and it went to this matrix. Okay. My cost on that item was $19.99. Okay. So let's look at our matrix. It picked up using the general, okay. and there's your 55% margin. That's why the software set this, because my rule said don't apply it. Now, if I go back to my work order, and I go back to my properties, go back to my online supplier, okay, let's pick a Wix filter. So here you see we've got our Wix filters. Grab any filter you want, click apply, and now you see Wix is in the manufacturer, and we've got a 44, actually it should be right at 45%, but 44.99, it's going to get me close enough because it's over $25. The rules become very important, and it can be a little bit confusing. So you really have to pay attention to how you're setting up the rules back here um, on these on these matrices, okay? Because that's going to have a have a a bearing effect on whether you're going to achieve what you want. Now, if I wanted this to apply on Wix and Fram, and I apologize, I didn't test this. Maybe Alan or Jeff can chime in. If I'm not mistaken, what I'm going to have to do is create another rule for my filters. So I'm going to add another rule for my filters. Okay. Description is filter. Excuse me. Okay. And then my secondary rule is going to be Fram. So now you see I've had I've created two rules for my filters. All the rules for specifics must be on top of the rules for general. So now that filter will apply, that filter matrix will apply to Wix and Fram filters only. Keep that in mind, guys, that your rules, um, your rules are going to have to be fairly specific. 
We're going to talk about tags real briefly, but this is really where I wanted to spend the bulk of the day. If I wanted to single this filter out again back to any service category, then if I say I only want this to work on filters that are under drivability, which in our case would normally be fuel and air filters, then I can single that out. So now it's not going to work on a transmission filter, a cabin filter, okay, because they're under different service categories. So again, my rules allow me to refine exactly how I want this matrix to apply. Hopefully that works for everybody. There's one last item on here, which is a tag, and I'm going to talk about tags here in just a second. So let me just save that. Let's go back to our presentation, do a little review. Add, edit, delete matrix rules, okay, applies to materials or sublet. It can, and it can be affected by, or you can control that by a service package, identifying a specific category, a specific service package code, or a specific service package title. It applies to materials using a material description, a material manufacturer, or a material tag. And on sublet, the rules are going to be description or tag, because sublet usually doesn't identify a manufacturer. Down below, tags are going to be strings of text, which you can categorize tags for contacts. You can have cat tags for work orders, materials, labor, and sublet lines for the purposes of applying other charges, which would be things like shop supplies, environmental fees, things of that nature, in addition to applying to your matrix rules. Guys, a lot of the stuff you're seeing on these screens here are coming right out of the help system. So, you know, if you, if you don't catch it right now, make sure you get in and look at the help. Very, very important that the margin matrix rules are organized properly. Remembering that a specific rule must be on top of a general rule. Otherwise, it is not going to work. I've seen lots of databases where the guys have not put the rules in the right place, thereby they're not applying. So make sure your specific rules are on top of your general rules. And a matrix can have as many rules as the user would like or that are needed. And again, we can come back here to the rules and see. I put two different rules in here for my filters. So depending on how you want those to apply. Work with it. Make sure you get a chance to test it so that when you start selling your product, you're not testing when you're selling. Make sure it's working right. Specific rules on top of general rules.